Uh, so uh, grateful that uh, the Chief Public Health Officer, Jima Bakwem, could jump back on because we had an interview with him yesterday uh, to discuss 23 positives that were reported by the Joint Information Center. Um, and then we had 29 reported last night. But the takeaway from the interview yesterday with you, Chima, was that we're in a really great place. Uh, and that was, we were kind of just scratching our head, um, trying to just balance what you said with, the, you know, this, uh, I mean, huge increase in positives and just trying to make uh, sense of it. Uh, good morning, Chima. What are the numbers telling us, though? C can we start with the 29 from last night? Because I was looking at making up. I was looking at the numbers, and I noticed that uh, out of the 29, 23 were military and six were civilian. I didn't run the numbers from the day before, but I did do the numbers from back on July 28th, and the way the numbers looked, I believe it was 40 military versus 24 civilian. And that was from the 28th through the, uh, the August 2nd. So th the military, are these um, military personnel from the uh, training exercises that are going on? Why are we seeing the numbers increase for the military? And that the answer to that question is going to be gotten today because we are meeting with them by 9 a.m. today. And um, we've actually been discussing with them um, about the cases. And then what we're seeing is also that um, at least 40% of those individuals are fully vaccinated. So um, if you look at what happened recently with CDC, you know, asking people to go back to mask wearing even if you're fully vaccinated, was because of um, the fact that we're seeing You mentioned the 40% fully vaccinated. Was that um, just for the military? Yeah, this is just, you know, primary uh, discussion, you know, like we are seeing also that um, we are having um, people who are vaccinated or getting infected. But the point is that um, if, you look, if you look at how the vaccines were described, the, va the vaccines does not stop you from getting infected. It actually stops you from getting very sick, stops you from dying, stops you from um, 
start to start the hospitalization. So if you look at our hospitalization rates, it's low. I think we just have only two. But it doesn't negate the fact that we are working towards zero cases. We want no cases. We want all mitigation um, measures in place. You know, just not that people are not going into the hospital, but we also do not want new variants. So that should also make people more conscious, you know. Now we have the Delta, it, 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 it could become something else tomorrow, something more infectious, something less infectious. But if there is ongoing transmission, there are chances that we're going to have variants. Right. No, uh, yeah, I, I understand that, that, you know, the vaccine, it kind of um, doesn't make it as, as severe if you were to, to contract uh, COVID. But... For me, like I have a child that cannot get vaccinated, and we've got kids that are going back to school. They're vulnerable because they're not vaccinated. So regardless if a person is uh, vaccinated or not, what about these kids out here that are getting ready to go to school? Okay, we, we, um, the department has been in constant um, dialogue with the Department of Education and then the private schools. So there is this layered approach for prevention that public health is driving, which is also a recommendation from public health. We can't use one against the other or one without the other. So we're looking at how to stack it. Initially, we did not have any pharmaceutical intervention for COVID. So everybody relied on those non-pharmaceutical interventions, which is basically having uh, wearing your mask, you know, having engineering controls in place, six feet social distancing. But with the pharmaceutical intervention coming on, which is which is the vaccine, which is more like trying to prevent, you know, uh, sorry, try, uh, which is which is just another um, avenue for us to have another layer of prevention. So we just need to rack and stack for those who can get vaccinated. We are asking them to go get vaccinated because getting vaccinated offers a layer of protection. Then we're also saying continue your mask wearing. So when you continue your mask wearing, even if you get infected, then there, there is a lower chance of you transmitting to somebody else. Then we're looking at we're looking at screening testing, which is another way for us, and which is what we're doing in the community and which we are going to be doing in the schools soon, is making sure that those unvaccinated populations are being tested regularly, you know, to make sure that there's no ongoing infection amongst those individuals. Then we're also looking at social measures, you know, like six feet distancing, um, where is applicable, or washing of hands. So if you look at the layered effects, if all come into play, the chances of transmission being minimized is higher than when we pick and choose what we want. So it, it, it is a time where behavior change is imminent. People will need to, you know, step back and, and look at, at, at things differently. It is not business as usual. We have we have a deadly virus that is actually creating havoc. There are chances that you know more people can get infected if they don't follow this um, public health recommendations. Right, yeah. So for the for the kids in school, with this layered protection, if the father, if the family is, if the family is inoculated and uh, um, vaccinated, the ones who are eligible for vaccination, and these kids are protected at home, so when they come to school, they are not going to infect their fellow kids. And you know, studies have shown that there's there's increased um, transmission now or infection rates amongst kids that are unvaccinated in, in, at, at that age. We also saw that number increase on Guam. But that will not make us not open the schools. And that's what we're working with the Department of Education to see how best you know we can keep the schools safe, have everybody in school, and then make sure that we have mitigation measures to 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 control um and spread of COVID, and then also have a surveillance system in place to ensure that we are making sure that we have an eye on what is going on. Right. So I think the, the, the unvaccinated would rely on the vaccinated to keep them safe. And then looking at all those um, social measures that we also have in place for those who are, un, who are unable to be vaccinated to keep themselves safe. So, so it's a balance. Uh, Tima, let's just go back to the beginning because I'm kind of confused about this. So we had on uh, August 1st uh, 506 military 
cases um, on August 2nd, it jumped to 529. So of the 52 cases that we had uh, reported Monday and uh, last night, how many of these were military and what kind of military are we talking? Are we talking Guam National Guard military or are we talking um, military that's here for the training? So like, like I mentioned, we were actually going to meet with them this this morning. And um, part of what we're going to discuss is um, the, the um, things that you mentioned. Because um, it is a reporting requirement for every jurisdiction to report every infectious disease. So they are reporting the numbers to us. So we're going to work with them to look at to look at what actually is going on because they have a robust system too. They have their own case investigators. They have their own um, quarantine isolation um, um, guide, guidelines. So it's just for us to work with them to understand what is actually going on, how it's going to impact our community, and also the measures we have in place to, to cut off um, um, the transmission. So right now, um, we, we're going to have that discussion you know, to, to make sure that we're on the same page. But as per reporting, is a requirement, and they're yeah. reporting to us. So yeah. there's nothing hidden. You know, so we have these numbers. We we've seen the numbers. We've made contact with them. They're open to discussing with us. You know what measures they have in place. You know going forward. And so that we can, uh, so we don't know. Yeah, we don't. We don't have the hard. You know, like we don't have the hard details on. You know who is fully vaccinated. You know when they were. In, information that the case investigators, uh, investigation unit of, of um, the military would have, um, but it, it's just for us to sit down. We're, we were looking at the bigger picture, you know, we're just not trying to concentrate on, you know, who, what, when. We're looking at what is the impact on our community, you know, yeah. what, what measures do you have in place to stop this from happening? How did it happen? So it's looking at, you know, going forward and then looking at how we can, well, how we make sure that this is actually taken care of. Because yeah. for, for for us from this side, we are still in a pandemic. You know, there, there are chances that this would happen. But like I always said, is what do we have in place? You know, what what concrete measures do we have in place to stop it from happening? But Shima, I think you've come on here before and you've uh, really praised the military for being so open and transparent. But how is it that we've had these fifty some cases reported over the last two days? And you haven't been able to get a meeting till this morning. So um, I mean, um, I, I think if you understand what how this works, right? You might have one case, one, and then you do an investigation and identify ten to twenty people who are exposed to this individual. You send them to go get tested, and and and, and the reason is this might be this might be one case that would have occurred last week. And then you you actually isolate the individuals that are uh, quarantine the individuals that are exposed to that person, and then test at the right time. So it's just not it's just not them being not being transparent. Is is them following the protocol? So they've reported to us, you know. So like I said, we're going to go sit down and discuss. You know, what we need to understand what is going on, you know. It might be it might be. Uh, um, 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 cluster of people in the same unit, it might be sporadic cases around the, the, uh, uh, the on base or off base. But we can't get these details if they don't have those details, because they also need to talk to these individuals. They need to, to interview them. They need to track where they've been, who they've been with. And, and, and when you see situations like this is when the case investigations are very tall, because it's just one case. And then you do you, you you test multiple people. When you test these multiple people, out of the 500 and something cases that you mentioned that were tested, at the, at, at the end of the day, we're getting you know this portion of people that were that were uh, um, that are positive. That shows that you know some 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 work has been put into that. Because if you're looking at if you're looking at one person being infected and then the person is isolated and then the contacts are not tested then there's no way we're going to get these numbers. But the good thing is that 
the numbers are speaking and then we have to work with those numbers so that's why we we, we want to sit down and, and understand you know clearly what is going on and which they are willing to discuss with us this morning is there uh what's the status of their mask mandate on the base they have the mask mandate back on I thought that uh, I read last week when DOD um, issued the mask mandate that uh, our local commands were like, well, because of some reason that it wasn't, yeah. they weren't doing the mask So they're mandate, following the mask mandate on the bases again, Shima? Yeah, that's, that's the information I have, but I don't have any memo to, to attach to that. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, back, I want to say when we had Annette Uggen on uh, last year when there were military... Uh, cases she um, had talked about the difficulty in accessing accessing information uh, from the for contact tracing uh, but then I think in an interview after that she said that it had gotten better but it sounds like we're kind of right back to where we don't really know what's going on and they report these cases and so is there any involvement from public health on the contact tracing for uh, these military positives because you're right we don't know I mean are they military here with a unit are they sequestered on the base or are they walking around in Tumon uh, doing whatever? We just don't know if public health is not involved with the contact tracing. So is there any involvement with public health relative to... So, that's, so I'm actually meeting with them with the uh, case investigation team. You know, we, we, we understand that we are, they're all, they have their trained, uh, they, have a, they have their own public health, you know, they have their own um, trained case investigators. So, and, and what happens at, at, with these infectious disease cases is, when you when you report out to us, you know, we sit down and look at the impact on the community. We share information, and, and I can give you an example. When when you have an individual who is active duty on base, who lives off base, and um, maybe is married to someone who works in the local economy, if there if there's an exposure, the military would actually take care of investigating the the active duty on base. And then pass it on to us to investigate, you know, the one in the community. So this this is this is just the process. So like I mentioned, the 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 huge number of cases that, that the sorry, the number of cases that, that has been reported to us is what is making us sit down with them, you know, to have a better picture of what is going on and the impact in the on the community. Because if you have um if these are active duty members that are positive and they are correctly um, isolated on base and they are, and they are contact quarantine, then we won't have any uh, need to, to worry so much. But if, if it's a mixture of, you know, off base and on base, then there's going to be a transfer of the on off base cases to us that we're going to trace, you know, identify the contacts and then quarantine and then test as, as necessary. But the fact is that there's a system in place and um, we, I think we've gotten so good at what, what we do that um, while the numbers are high, uh, 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 like you mentioned, we are, we are optimistic that um, we are going to get to the end of it you know, with our investigators. So the meeting today would, um, would open up, would, open, would show us more you know, or tell us more about what is going on. How concerning, though, is it for you when, because you said only less than half of the positives from the military are actually vaccinated? You know, like I mentioned, you know, vaccination just <laughs> doesn't stop transmission. Like basically, it doesn't. It's proven, right? But what, what it does is that it keeps you out of the hospital. It makes you less sick, you know? So I, I think it's just looking at it that way. And that's why I keep saying, um, you know, the layered approach is important. And Guam has never, uh, uh, Guam as, as a whole did never stop the mask mandate, which is, which which has been proven to be a good thing for us because for those um, jurisdictions, for those states that actually stopped the mask mandate because of vaccination, got the, got the brunt of it because of increased um, 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 cases with the Delta variant. So it, it's just to, to, to make sure that the message is clear that the vaccines actually protect us and, and, and stops us from getting really sick, reduces hospitalization, and protects the vulnerable from you know dying from COVID. There's no there's no cure for COVID. The
vaccine is not a kill. So that assumption, that assumption should, shouldn't come up, you know, that is a kill. It's another layer of protection with other levels of protection that we need to keep our community safe. Right. I'm just saying that we're here, out here, telling everybody to join the vaccination, join the vaccination, and we achieved herd immunity at 80%. And then you, you tell us that, oh, well, you know, with the military, only 40%, um, uh, well, 40 percent of the people that tested positive were fully vaccinated. Yeah, also so that means the 60 percent weren't. Yeah. Um, also, Chima, uh, I'm looking at Joint Region Marianas' Facebook page here uh, five days ago. I haven't seen an update, but it says no, re no change required to Joint Region Marianas mask policy. The directive contained in the DOD memorandum released July 28th requires the wearing of masks by DOD personnel and on-site contractor employees in indoor settings in areas of substantial or high community transmission, regardless of vaccination status. Commander Navy Installations Command has not identified Guam as a high transmission area, and additionally, according to the current government of Guam public health data, Guam is considered to have low community transmission rates under the CDC criteria. Accordingly, the recently signed DOD policy does not require any change to our mask policies at this time unless a command implements more restrictive guidance. Joint Region will continue to monitor the public health situation and maintain the health and safety of the military and civilian community on Guam. Fully COVID-19 vaccinated personnel and patrons are not required to wear a mask indoors or outdoors while on JRM installations. A person is considered fully vaccinated at least two weeks after their final dose of a U.S. FDA authorized COVID-19 uh, vaccine. So I don't know. Does that sound yeah, like? Can you send me that, please? Yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, there was no. There was like I said. There was no memo transmitted to me. You know, to to show that um, the masking policy had changed or not changed. But going back to what you are saying, um, Sabrina, the the chances of transmission is always high when you are not using the layered approach. I'm saying and I'm, I'm being consistent with that. You get vaccinated, you still wear your mask. You know, it's important. If you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't take off one for the other. It has to go as one. You know, the, the vaccine is there to protect you from getting sick and, and, and being hospitalized. And if you look at our hospitalization, as of yesterday, we have only two people in the hospital. So, 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 is just looking at what, what the science is saying and also going with what the science is telling us. So the, the, this military case, we, we, we have to see that if, uh, in our meetings today, you know, we're going to go, go through what is going on. And, 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 and you should understand that I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very um, clear in, you know, in how I approach this thing. If there are recommendations I have to make to them, I'm going to be very open and make that recommendation to them. Because the the, the, um, the safety of the island, you know, the, the health of the island is solely dependent on um, public health, you know, for, for this kind of situation. And we're going to go there, you know, bearing in mind that we need to protect our community. So what, whatever interventions that we can suggest to them, you know, we have to come into an agreement on how, you know, we can keep the community safe. Looking at those numbers, looking at the numbers, looking at the low infectivity rate, uh, you know, and using those numbers, we actually see those numbers. But the department, the government has refused to back down on our, on our, on our mandate for masking because we understand that transmission can still occur. So it could be one person who is a super spreader that would, that would spread the virus. And then do we need to wait for our numbers to get up high, you know, for us to do the needful? So that, is, that should be the question, you know. You know, coming, this, 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 this is a, 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 a very uncomfortable situation where you understand clearly what would happen if you don't do something, and then you, you continue to do it until that happens, and then you go back to doing what you're supposed to do, which I think is not right. And that has been the stance of the department. We have insisted that we are going to follow the mask mandate. We've worked with our partners. We've discussed with our partners. We're working with DOE. We're working with the private schools as schools are opening. You know, 
discussing this layered approach to prevention, which they are all buying into. So do, do, do we really need to wait for it to happen? It is preventive measures. That is what it's called. We are trying to prevent it from happening. We don't want it to happen. We don't have that, we, you know, we don't have that luxury you know, of, of being in a situation where we, we let it happen and then we start yeah. taking back the hands of the gun. Yeah, I mean, we worked so hard to get where we are today. We are working so hard to continue keeping the island safe so that people can return to normal. So for us, for us at Public Health, prevention is key to what we're doing. So we don't want to see more cases. So part of our discussion with the military today, you know, we bothered on, you know, how to move on without, you know, more cases, how to move on, you know, as, as a unit, you know, being in, in, on the same, um, being on the same page about how to prevent, you know, transmission. Yeah. But we're not on the same page, though, Chima, because we've got the so-called layered approach that you're talking about outside defense, but the military, they're not wearing masks, and that's where we're seeing this spike. So, like I mentioned now, that is, so that so the, 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 the discussion, you know, we're going to have a conversation. You know, it's not a confrontation; it's a conversation because the numbers are showing exactly the numbers are showing exactly, you know, what the science is saying too. You know, if you're vaccinated, you're not wearing your mask. You know, there's going to be transmission. But you know, if you're looking at the data saying that you know Guam is a safe place, you know, there's no need for you to wear wear a mask. But our own local data is showing that our continued use of masks and our continued vaccination is what made our numbers, you know, what is what made our numbers what they are today. So we just need to share that information. So it, 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 it is a conversation, you know, showing you know what our science, you know, has done for us and what our social interventions have done for us, so that we are all on the same page on how to move forward. So it, I think the meeting will be very productive. Right. Where's the conversation taking place? And uh, when you say military, are we talking about like JRM or uh, Air Force, Navy? Or they have their own. Health, they have their own um, public health uh, um, unit. So we're we're discussing with our partners. You know, these are these are partners talking. You know, so we 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 are just sharing information. You know, looking at best practices. This this we do constantly with the military. You know, we we sit down, we have all these meetings, we have these southern meetings, you know, yeah. to share information about what is going on. And and like I said, they've been very open, open, open with us. They 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 are all very open with us and they are receptive to us, you know, having these conversations with them. So we're not seeing a situation where, you know, they are you know they're fighting us off, they don't want us to know. It's actually is a is a conversation that is ongoing. And um, and uh, and it's it's always been um, fruitful, you know. Since um, since the director took over, we've had a series of meetings at that leadership level, you know, with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the military leadership on um, issues bordering on um, guidance, you know. So we we have that level of rapport at, at that leadership level. Then at the technical and um, operational level, we also have that discussion with their public health team. Which is what we're going to to have today. And if we have, if we agree on something, they will take it up to their leadership. We take it up to our leadership, and then you know that there's that cooperation. So this 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 is this 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 shouldn't be seen as you know something that cannot be discussed. And um, we're going to have that discussion, and we're going to come up with um, best practices on how to move forward. So have you guys met in the past five days, then? Because the cases uh, within the military in the past five days. Uh, there's been 40 uh, positive cases. When's the last time you guys met? Yeah. So there, are, there, there have been conversations back and forth. You know, conversations. You know, when the reports come in, the case investigators will discuss with their case investigators. But this meeting is just part of part of that ongoing, you know, information sharing. You know, it, it, so telling you that we have a meeting today doesn't mean that we didn't have a meeting tomorrow or yesterday, you know. There's ongoing communication between us because if there's no ongoing communication, we wouldn't be seeing these numbers. So we're just going to sit down and look at, you know, look at what, what the, the, the good thing to do is to understand what is causing the spike, you know. That is something that we need to understand. And for them also, they also need to understand what is causing the spike, you know. So it's just not that, it, it, it's not, it's not, it's not, um, it's not a situation where you are just going to 
to wish you to, to, to you know to to wish you know it's something that you have to proactively you know ask questions get information uh, cross check data to make sure that you understand clearly what is going on mm. yeah okay where's the meeting i'm sorry is this over yeah. zoom or is this face to face we're gonna have a zoom we're gonna have a zoom meeting today right maybe you should share the information that we got a full-on mask mandate outside the base with them yeah. You know, like drop the governor's memo. Oh, whoa, whoa, hey, look at that. Hey, we got a we got a mask mandate. How about you guys? Because yeah, I mean, so if, I, if we're yeah. having this conversation to help the community, then I mean, you know, it's kind of obvious we should be on the same page. Yeah, and that's what I'm that's what I was saying about sharing best practice. You know, yeah. it's sharing best practice. We're going to see. We're going to share that best practice information with our colleagues. You know, and then they will see. It is 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 is. In, in public health, you know, it's ongoing. We have inter-jurisdictional reports. Remember last year, the cases from Hawaii. Those guys arrived on Guam, but they were tested in Hawaii. Hawaii actually transmitted the result to Guam, saying these guys arrived Guam and they're positive, and then we had to go out to look for them. So we, we actually owe ourselves that uh, uh, um, um, cooperation as public health practitioners, you know, to, to make sure that we track infectious disease across, you know, jurisdictions so that is basically what we're doing having a sit down with our partners to to understand what is going on on their side and then looking at how it's going to impact us on our side and then coming out with a mitigation measure that will benefit both sides and i don't think they really i don't think they really want to have cases you know I don't, and nobody wants to have covid you know within their community so it is not something you wish someone and then as they are seeing these cases i know they are concerned too and they're also working hard, you know, to contain the spread. Are, are you concerned at all about this uh, UK military ship, uh, the Chima, that um, had a COVID outbreak coming for the training? Is that something that's on you guys' radar? So, like I said, you know, like, <laughs> I'm always concerned about <laughs> even one case, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm always concerned, but um, the, the thing is that the concern actually translates to making sure that we have all our uh, uh, um, plans together, you know. We have all our strategies in place and uh, intervention and mitigation measures. So concern, yeah. We, uh, not even, not even uh, you know, we have TB too, which is an infectious disease. We have leprosy, we have um, STDs. So there's always something to worry about as a public health practitioner. But at the end of the day, you know, it is our, our, ma our main mandate is to make sure that we prevent and then make sure that the community is safe. So if it's about it's about concern, I'm always concerned about everything. But um, like I said, the, the information information is key to you know to prevention. When we know what is happening, we're able to think it through and um, you know work together as a team, you know, to safeguard the community. All right. Thank you, Chima. You good, Bree? Yeah. Good luck in the meeting. Yeah, let us know. We'll be, we'll be. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll shoot you some messages after. Like, how long do you think it's gonna go? Like an hour? Or? You know, this is, <laughs> this is a regular meeting that you know. That we just want to know what is going on. We just want to yeah, make sure we that do. we know what is going on, and uh, <laughs> that is what we want to find out. Thank you, Chima. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Well, just keep it in the KUM News Zoom room. Uh, we do have the uh, health oversight of the Guam Legislature, Speaker oh. Teresa Lahi. I hear for a Wednesday check-in. Uh, Madam Speaker, we're probably going to have to jump over the top of the hour, but just really quick, wanted to get your reaction to this conversation that we just had.